Once upon a time, long, long ago, so long ago that no one's quite sure if it really happened or not, in a little country, in a little house, in a little valley, on a big mountain, so far away that no one's quite sure if it's really there or not, there was a happy couple, Mr. and Mrs. Beltane, and they lived a happy life. They had orchards, they had pigs and cows and chickens, and it was a lovely, bucolic mountain life. But there was deeping up, eating up inside them, there was a, there was a great sadness. For try as they might, and they, they, they had quite a lot of fun trying, I mean, every, every possible way, every different combination, some they thought might not work, but most of, most of the ways they, they thought probably actually had quite a, quite a good chance of working. They really, really wanted a child. And then one day, on a snowy day, Mrs. Beltane was standing beneath the juniper tree. And the juniper tree moved. And she was moved to take her knife and cut herself a little bit. And the blood flowed and the blood flowed. And she looked at the snow with the blood on it. And she said, I wish, I wish, I wish that I could have a son with his hair as red as blood and his face as white as snow. And she knew, she knew that it would be so. And she had a son. She called him Hamish. <laughs> and they were very, very happy, and a happy, happy family. But as sadnesses come, and sadnesses do come, and sadnesses will come, she died, and he was miserable. And he was a good man, and his heart was in the right place, and he did the right things. He picked the eggs when he was supposed to pick the eggs. He didn't let the apples get rotten. He fed his son three times a day and told him bedtime stories. But he wasn't thinking. He was mad with grief. And he married this woman, and the woman might have been a good woman. She might have been a good woman. Her heart might have been in the right place. It might have been, but... They were sort of happy as couples that sort of live together and sort of have to look after each other and have a child that's not theirs are sort of happy. And then she had a daughter, a lovely, lovely daughter called Heidi, who was the apple of her eye. But it wasn't right. She knew that it, it wasn't right. There was a problem, and it was a big problem, and that problem, problem kept her awake at night. It kept her... Everything was turned and poisoned inside her because she knew that that apple tree was not going to go to her daughter. It was going to go to this bloody son. This is not even her son, this Hamish. And then one day this, this little imp, this little forked tongue creature sat on her head, sat on her head, sat on her shoulder and it said to her, you know what you've got to do. <laughs> you've got to kill him. Go on, kill him. Well, she wasn't going to kill him because she was a good woman. You don't go killing your stepson just because he's going, well, if you could, and then everything would be, you could just kill him, you know, get him and kill him. But she didn't want to kill him. And then one day, they were putting things in the apple chest, and as you had a great big ah, steel apple chest because it keeps the, the mice out, and you can keep the apples from one harvest to the next. And this little imp sat and said, slam, slam the lid, and you'll cut off his head. So she slammed the lid. And it cut off her head, and she opened it, and she giggled. She'd never seen anything so funny. This little, this head with its, its face, face as white as snow, and its hair as red as blood was there, separated. She didn't know what to do. But the imp told her, now it's very simple, you take the head, you put it back, and you tie a, a neckerchief around. And when Heidi turns along, you send Heidi up and say, you know, you want Hamish down. So Heidi came along. Uh, hi, Heidi dear, could you, could you go and, and get Hamish, but he, he's not coming. Well, he's a very naughty boy. Just punch him in the, punch him in the ear if he doesn't come. Ah, his head's fallen off. You awful, awful, you've killed, you've killed your brother. Are you, I mean, uh, she was only four, so she kind of believed what she, she was told. It, 
It's a very naughty thing to kill your brother. It's quite normal. It, it happens to, to lots of people that they kill. Their, but you must never tell your father you've killed your brother. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make Hamish into sausages. So they made Hamish into sausages. So the father came back and wondered where Hamish was. Well, yeah, my, my brother wanted a hand, you know, his farm. So we sent him away. He's back. Mm -hmm. And then he saw the food and he started to eat. He had an enormous hunger and he ate all the food. And Heidi cried and cried and cried. Ah, she took all the bones and she buried them under the juniper tree. And they weren't very happy. <coughs> Nobody was happy then. And one day in the juniper tree, the most beautiful bird that anyone has ever seen appeared. And it sang with a song that was like silk, that was like pearls pouring into your, your ears. And then it, it flew off. But whilst Mr. Beltane and Hamish had loved it, Mr. Beltane, oh, it's awful, there's something dreadful happening, it's all, oh, I, ah. And the bird flew off and it saw a jeweler's shop and it sat outside the jeweler's shop and it sang this song that was so beautiful. And the jeweler came out and he had his finest golden necklace and he said, if you'll sing for me again, I'll give you my necklace. And the bird sang the song. The song was, my mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. My sister, she buried me. Such a beautiful song. And he hung the necklace over her, the bird's neck, and the bird flew away until it saw a cobbler's song. And then it sang and it sang. And the cobbler came out and said, It's my finest pair of shoes. I'll give them to you if, if you'll sing again. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. My sister, she buried me. The cobbler put the shoes around his neck. The bird flew off until he got to a mill and it sang again. And the millers came out and they said, what can we give you? What can we give you so that you'll sing again? And the bird looked at the millstone and the big millers struggled to pick up this enormous millstone and put it over the bird's neck. My mother, she killed me. My sick father, he ate me. My sister, she buried me. And the bird flew off back to the juniper tree. In the house, the mother's beside herself. She's curled up. She's hysterical. There's something terrible. There's something terrible. It's awful. It's dreadful. It's wrong. It's happening today. I don't know what it is. Now, as far as the father and Haiti were, it's just another hysterical fit from this rather silly and tiresome woman by now. But she's absolutely tearing her hair out. And the birds sing. My and it's so beautiful. And the door says, well, I'm going out. You can't go out. You can't go out. Go, go, go out. The daughter goes out. The birds sing. A necklace appears around her neck, and she says, oh, look, 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 mommy, look at this neck, it's the prettiest necklace, it's so pretty, I can't touch it, it's evil, it's wrong. Well, if you've got a necklace, it's fine, I can't see what I get. My mother, she killed me, my father, he ate me, my sister, she, oh, such a beautiful song, and the shoes we get, that's just lovely, I all of those, and, well, you should go, I can't bear it, I can't go out. Mother went out. My mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. My sister, she buried me. At which the giant milkman fell down, smashed her head to smithereens, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs>